Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a Master Club Fitter at Second Swing, and we're outside today on a chilly fall day, uh, testing some drivers against one another, specifically the Titleist TS line and the new Titleist TSI line against one another. We're gonna see the differences. Thomas is gonna hit the shots. We're gonna compare them. And so this should be a fun one because Titleist drivers always making some noise in the market. So um, first, Thomas, what do you think we're gonna see from this? And I guess, I know you're very extensive knowledge on Titleist drivers, so um, what do you expect from this? They definitely caught up with their competitors with regards to ball speed and keeping that spin rate down. 917 was maybe just a little bit behind and I was very excited to see the TS2 and TS3 perform really well in this year's testing. So I believe the TSI 2 and 3 is going to be a great complement, kind of that same kind of inspiring shape where the Titleist yep. presents, a little more forgiving with the, with the TSI 2 model, a little more tour inspired model with the TSI 3 model. I think it's going to be a great year for Titleist. They've got some great premium golf shafts as well that they're going to throw in the mix at a good rate, essentially, with regards to $200 upcharge versus these shafts and get pretty expensive otherwise. Yeah. So it's going to be a great year for Titleist. Yeah, so you mentioned the shaft, um, and we're going to use one of those kind of premium shaft offerings for this test. Um, and then also, given the stock um, lofts are a little bit different, so we'll have to make a tweak there for this test, but uh, can you give us the explainer on those? Yeah, so speaking of golf shaft first, got the Graphite Design XC6S. Uh, I play the Graphite Design XC6X. We don't happen to have the 6X yet, but this is going to be very, very close to profile that I'm playing. Also, yeah. it's cold out right yeah. now too, so it's kind of nice to play right. something that's maybe not as extra stiff when I'm maybe not swinging at as fast as I possibly can yeah. when I get my club speed a little faster there as well. Um, you mentioned club heads and adjustments we need to make. So with the TS2 and TS3, we have the nine and a half degree heads. Okay. Um, we're going to put those up to the D4 setting. So D4 setting is up three quarters of a, of a degree. Okay. Um, so we're going to play it basically between 10 and 10.25 degrees of loft. Okay. About as close as we can get. With the TSI2 and the TSI3, they don't have any half degree increments on their driver SATA lofts anymore. So we're going to be testing the 10 degree driver in the TSI 2 and the TSI 3 in their standard stated loft situation there. So it's going to be a very, very close comparison. Okay. Yep. Nice. Well, yep. let's, uh, you know, we got the test in place here. We've got our format here. We're going to uh, hit some shots, test them out, and see what Titleist has for us today. Well, let's get after it. All right, Thomas, looks like you got the TS2 to start with. Um, you know, just to make it unbiased, we'll go kind of three shots at each one, then we'll come back repeat the, th the three shots again and um, we'll see what we find out here. But, you know, Tylus has stepped up the driver game quite a bit the last couple of years, so this should be a fun one. That was it pretty well. Slightly yeah. on the tall side. Yeah, so Thomas, you're, you know, usually you're hitting a nine degree driver in our tests, uh, so this will be a little bit different. We might see some uh, kind of slightly different numbers, but yep. TS2 there to start with. Uh, what do you think about that, that look, uh, and what, how do you think that performed in those three shots? It's, uh, it's definitely got the triangular look, both the TS2 and the TSI2 from what I've seen so far, definitely a little more forgiving with regards to more weight towards the, the back of the club. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good looking club. Uh, one thing I noticed, as you mentioned, loft, with this set at like 10.25 in the D4 setting, is I do notice a lot of loft. I'm not used yeah. to seeing that much kind of loft on, on, the, on the driver. But uh, this would be a good comparison. Um, loft is your friend. It's probably gonna get my carry distance up today. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to mention is the carry numbers, you know, you're already at, you're over 286 with three shots and we're in the chilly weather today. So I know that's a number that you're going to accept. Uh, and then, you know, looking at the dispersion down the fairway, I mean, first of all, the distance dispersion on the carry is very consistent. You had, I think, one maybe out to the left there that drew a little bit more, but uh, looks pretty solid right there. I mean, these are, if you can see on the chart here, there's like small, very small increments that are kind of your grid, so to speak, and you're, you're very straight and you're definitely on the fairway with all those shots. Yeah, they were, they were good swings. So now we're going to switch to the TSI 2 and hit three shots of that one to see how it compares. All 
All right, TSI 2, that was three shots. Uh, you know, the TSI drivers, big, you know, the feature is kind of the new shape and the new face, right? So they kind of have wrapped a little bit of that toe, kind of rounded it off with the shape. And then uh, the cub face made with a new, like, what is it? ATI titanium yep, ATI. aerospace material or something like that. So one of those really rare materials out there to kind of increase that ball speed. What did you think about the look of the TSI-2 compared to the TS-2? So TSI-2 no longer has that traditional triangle that's kind of that little alignment aid in the top of the mm -hmm. crown with a lot of the previous Titus drivers. They've flip-flopped it around, they've changed the, the boldness of them a little bit over, over the time. So now it just says TSI as opposed to the, the triangle. So that's okay. the first thing I do notice is maybe a little cleaner look as opposed to seeing kind of that, that triangle. Be, you know, it, it's definitely noticeable, just a different look, that's, that's for sure. Um, sound was also interesting as well. I feel like the TS2 was louder. Um, this was still fairly loud, but it was like a more of a, a slightly muted sound compared to the TS2. Okay. But it was, it was still fairly loud. I know in our initial testing, when we've done like the TSI3 model, that one did sound a little muted, so yep. it'd be interesting to test that compared to the TS3 as well. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, initially here, the spin was a little higher with the TSI-2. Uh, carry distance dropped uh, just a tad, and then total distance did drop as well. Um, but, you know, you have your dispersion out there is it's pretty similar. Yeah. Uh, they're all hovering around that center line, uh, 280 to 290 uh, in carry distance out there. So It seemed like it was flying a little higher in total feet in the air. It just seemed like yep. the bullfight was just slightly higher in the air. Now this is a 10 degree head too. The TS2 was 10.25 with the adjustments there. Okay. So I may have expected the TS2 to fly slightly higher, but I feel like this TSI flew a little higher from it, what I could see. Yeah, is that it, accurate? Well, you are correct. It was about 20 feet higher, the TSI2. Interesting, um, yeah. So that's something that we'll note and maybe, you know, as we hit three more shots of each the next time around, but also with the TS3 and the TSI3 to monitor that height a little bit as well. Well, I know with Titleist, the reason for lowering the lofts on their, on their drivers, having it at 8, 9, 10, 11, as opposed to 8.5, 9.5, 10.5, 11.5, yeah. is because they have played around with that CG a little bit. And it, because they've made some slight modifications to the, to the driver, they're able to lower that loft just a little bit to gain a little bit more kind of bull speed and keep okay. that launch down a little bit. Because I could imagine if this was a 10.5 degree setting, it probably would have gone even oh, higher yeah. for me. Yeah. For sure, yeah. yeah. Why don't we uh, transfer over here and we'll start with the TS3. Okay. Well, Thomas, the swing speed's picking up a little bit. You've got over 111 in there, 112. Um, what did you think about that? Because I, first thing I noticed, the sound was way quieter than both the TS2 and TSI2. Um, did you get the same impression and what else did you notice? Yeah, it feels like it's more solid, more compact off the face as opposed to the others where it felt like it was just loud off the face and just kind of making a lot of noise and kind of springy, I guess. This one felt like it was just kind of jumping off the face with a lower muted sound. Yeah. Essentially, with the with the TS3, um, I like the bull flight with this one a little bit better. It seemed like it was a little bit lower. Yeah. I feel like it was still spinning. I think all three of them so far have spun a little bit higher than what I'm used to. Yeah. It's probably related to that loft that we've got on the, on the driver right now, but I think I feel like I picked up a little bit of carry distance with this versus the TSI two. Yeah, you did. That was about three yards of carry distance for the TS3 compared to the TSI two. Okay. Um, Height-wise, it was very—it's pretty similar to the TS2. It was 122 on average with the TS3 and um, 116 actually with the TS2. So okay. A little bit higher with the TS3 there, but yep. uh, you know the looking at dispersion quickly and um, your circles are—I think the distance consistency with all of them. There's kind of a clear, you know, TS2 has been the furthest so far. Then it's the TS3 and then it's the TSI2. There's kind of okay. a clear. Uh, there's crew levels there, so to speak. So that's interesting to take note of so far. It's very interesting. But uh, we'll get to the TSI-3 now here. Okay. Sounds good.
Okay, the TSI-3, Thomas, three shots there. Um, again, I'm gonna ask you about the look and feel. Uh, clearly, right away, you notice that it's a little bit more rounded than the TS, both the TS-3 and the TSI-2 as well, right? Definitely the most rounded, pear-shaped looking driver of the four of them, by far. I feel like the TSI-3 is completely kind of pear-shaped, good-looking kind of players club to look, look down at, maybe more, more tour-inspired. TSI-3 is kind of like a hybrid. I feel like it's kind of like a hybrid between the uh, TS-2 and, uh, and the TSI-3. It's kind of a little in between, I, okay. I'm guessing. Um, but this one for sure, definitely a little more players inspired look to look down okay. at. Okay, yep. interesting. And yep. looking at the numbers briefly after three shots with each club, um, the lowest spin so far is actually the TS-2, which is a little surprising. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, the height there, the lowest height was actually the TSI-3, which okay. is maybe what we would have expected going in there. Um, so the, you're carrying everything about 285. The TSI-2 is just a little shorter because you had some extra height on that for those three shots. Um, yep. But then uh, if we look at the uh, dispersion, I think the big noticeable difference with the TSI-3 is that it was all three of them were left of the center line whereas you had a couple with the other three models that were out to the right of it. So this one able to turn over maybe a little bit more, maybe more workable for the draw that you like to hit, yep. perhaps. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, we have three more shots with each one to hit here. So Yeah, let's hit three more now that I'm completely kind of warmed up here. And I know my club speed was fluctuating between like 109 and kind of 112 as, kind of as we're seeing here. So let's hit three more with each one and see how the averages look. Okay, well, Thomas, that was three with the TSI-3. Um, you know, I, I think we can talk about the elephant in the room here on that last one where you kind of, the one-handed finish. You can tell the, by uh, my reaction, yeah. Yeah, obviously didn't hit, heel. It, didn't hit it perfect, but yeah. the numbers and the spin did not jump up. Um, you know, or I guess the spin didn't jump up, the numbers didn't, uh, you know, significantly drop or anything. So that yep. is actually, that's a pleasant surprise to me for the forgiveness of the TSI-3. Yeah, a little lower spinning with the TSI-3, a little lower ball flight as well, in general across all those six shots. One thing I just kind of noticed, you know, definitely the ball flight, I liked it. I, I always like hitting shots here because I'm hitting against seeing this fence in the distance. I like to see the ball kind of, kind of gradually kind of dive down towards yeah. the fence. I don't want to see it keep going up. Yeah. You can tell what, what my ideal ball flight was, and this TSI-3 feel like it was more in the optimal window. Yeah. Than all, and then the other th other three. Yeah, I mean, it had the lowest launch angle, had the lowest height, uh, and I know, you know, I, for you and hitting a nine degree most of the time, this was going to be the adjustment. Probably it was hitting a little higher, uh, maybe that spin jump up with the added loft. Uh, but the TSI three for you know what is that at ten degrees right now, um, you know that stayed as similar to what you're used to. I guess more than the other models did in this test specifically. So. Yep. Pretty solid performance from TSI-3 there. Those last three were pretty good, considering the one was a miss hit, and it still uh, chased out over 300 yards. Yeah, I was, I was pretty impressed. Uh, like I said, that last one was a little bit of a miss hit, but I still got away with it. Yeah, and then, of course, we should also touch on the, the sliding weight in the back, the yep. uh, sure-fit track in the, in the back of the club head there. Would, that's not really hasn't been a, a common place in TS drivers, Titleist drivers at all, over the years. They've been... Uh, basically focused on hosel adjustments. They've got the weight in the back there that adds even more adjustability that uh, I know we'll probably focus on here in a future video. But uh, for the sake of this, we're just comparing the club heads and uh, I'm gonna give these numbers to you now and 
we can break them down. Sounds good. Okay, Thomas, you've got the numbers in front of you here. Um, I know you've got a quick glance them already and you said, this is very interesting. And so I kind of want to get your perspective on that. Yeah, I was just kind of bouncing, looking at kind of the launch angle and the spin and the ball speed and just getting a general idea as to take a quick glance what we're going to kind of talk about. I want to just touch on the, the launch angle, which I thought was really interesting kind of right off, off the bat. The TS2 and the TSI2 both launched at 14.1 degrees. The uh, TS3 launched at 13.3 and the TSI3 launched at 12.3. So it's kind of interesting okay. here to see how the TSI-3 launched just a little bit lower. It's kind of what I was expecting, yeah. which is why the bull flew a little bit lower and a little bit better kind of bull flight essentially there, there as well. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting to, to see that in regards to kind of to, to those numbers. Um, if we look at carry distance with the mole, they're all separated by, we're talking three yards. They're all basically carried between yeah. 282 and 285. Um, the two, TSI-3 also won on carry distance. 285 was the highest carry distance going 307.3. Okay. So that was the highest carry and the highest total distance out of, out of all of them um, with regards to kind of those numbers. All the other three were basically 283. Yeah. Kind of, was 283 going 302 was kind of the, the numbers we're seeing there. Um, if we look at club speed, I touched on this briefly earlier in the video, um, the club speed with the TS2 and TSI2 was basically 109.5 and 110. The TS3 and TSI3 was 111.8 with both of them. Okay. And that, so, I mean, and, you know, it's not about you getting warmed up throughout because you went back, hit the TS2 and TSI2 after already hitting all of them and the club speed stayed down on those, which is the really interesting part. And it does make you think about, you know, the aerodynamics and stuff yep. that go into the TS2 and TSI2, kind of that larger shape versus the TS3 and TSI3. It could be that, could be also you kind of, I know you pref prefer the pear-shaped rounded shapes and maybe it was more of a confidence thing for you to be able to kind of give a little bit more into the swing. But um, it's one thing to, to think about from those numbers. Yeah, very, very interesting. I always like to look at kind of the, the launch angle a little bit and the spin a little bit here too. Um, really interesting if we look at um, the spin rate, basically we're talking 2,500, 2,600, 2,700, 2,500. So we're talking about 200 difference between them all. The lowest spin of them all was the TSI-3. Yeah. That's what I would have expected. I would have absolutely expected the TSI to be the lowest spin of the, of the four models that we hit. The one surprising one to me was the TS-2. Yeah. TS-2 was 2541, so it was only 10 RPMs higher than the TSI-3. Yeah. Um, so that really kind of su surprised me with regards to the, the spin rate. It really stayed in the ideal zone for a 10 degree driver yeah. for sure. Yeah, I think that was one of the big surprises too from this is the TS2, just the performance in general, whether it was spin, um, it didn't have that sort of high launch characteristics or that um, high spin characteristics that we maybe would have expected from that larger club shape, the high MOI shape uh, that the TS2 presents. So that was one thing that it also the takeaway from this is that TS2 kind of competes with maybe the lower spinning models here. Yep, it's a, it's a great last generation model, definitely yeah. for sure. I think Titleist did great steps with their TS line and they're obviously following it up with TSI line there as well. Yep. Um, the reason for spin, we talk about ball flight. Um, so if you're talking about the amount of curve that was on, on the ball, with the TS2, it had the straightest flight of them all. So the TS2 was 3.2 feet of curve to the right. So it had the little least amount of curve. So I always like to talk about when the ball fades, it usually always curves further. It's gonna spin more to the, yeah. it's gonna spin more essentially. Um, if we look at the others, they were all spinning just a little bit more because they were curving a little bit more to the right yeah. there too. So whatever reason, the TS2, um, it just was easier to kind of hit pretty pretty straight. Yeah. For some reason, I was squaring that club face basically square every single time. Yeah, and one thing to note too is we did with the adjustments and the, the, loft, the standard loft differences, um, the adjustments made resulted in the TS and the TS2 and TS3 drivers having a tad more loft, correct? Correct, um, Point, uh, point two five. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that, so, I yeah. mean, and you would expect on a very minimal level, but you know, 
higher ball flights with those two drivers. And the TS2 did stay low there as well. So that's another thing to consider in this test is that that variable, um, it's not perfect, but it did, it should suge suggest a higher flight for the TS2 and it really didn't result yeah. that way. The TS2 was great. Definitely a great last generation model. If you're looking for just a little bit more ball speed, a little lower spin, a little lower ball flight, the TSI3 for sure was definitely kind of like a, a winner there as yeah. well. I think the TSI2 with more testing would be a, is definitely a great complement to the TS2. Yeah. Um, and a great model this year as well, for sure. So yeah. uh, I want to touch on dispersion really quick too as well, because that's also very, very important. So if we're looking here, what well, interesting is thing was the TS2 was, yes, performing pretty well, but there was a couple of misses in there. They didn't go quite as, quite as far. So that one actually had the largest dispersion circle oh, okay. of, of them all. Um, if we look at TS3, TS3, I would say that one probably had the second largest kind of left to right dispersion circle. Um, and then if we look at the TSI2 and the TSI3, kind of interesting that those two probably had the most consistent bull flight of, of the mole there as well. The TS2 was by far the straightest of the mole. So definitely the straightest, maybe okay. wasn't going the longest of, 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 in our test here today. It was a couple yards shorter than sure. longest but it was flying the straightest. So that's okay. obviously very, very important as well. And then the TSI-3 has some, had four very, very straight shots. It had one slightly kind of shorter left and then it had one that I smoked that went the furthest of the yeah. mole there as well. So kind of interesting there to see level of forgiveness. You know, the TS-2, TSI-2 may be a little more forgiving than the TSI-3 and TS-3 models. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. And you can look into those numbers. It's, it's interesting that you can kind of take you know what you're looking for in your game you can kind of use this test to see what i your what you need to improve on you know the, T, the ts2 was a great lower spinning but yet a forgiving model but that dispersion was a little bit larger than the rest so that's just one example and you can dive into the other ones as well and everything thomas just said uh, there are different advantages to each of these models uh, but i think the main takeaway too while there's different advantages and disadvantages they're all pretty solid golf clubs and they all deliver in distance they all deliver in ball speed and they all deliver and kind of keeping a straight ball flight, which we saw today. So um, golfers interested in the Titleist, well, the TS series or the TSI series, Second Swing is the place to go for you. Uh, SecondSwing.com, or you can stop in one of our stores and one of our experts will set you up with a new driver. So uh, Thomas, thanks for hitting the shots and uh, giving your insight.